Good morning, YouTube. We're here today at Burt Jamie Yacht Yard in Annapolis, Maryland. It's early June. We have a very special boat to show you. This is the 2006 Hylas 54 Rover. She's a brand new listing and she's uh, just arrived back into Annapolis after a winter in the Caribbean and in Bermuda. And she is ready to go. She is in tip top condition mechanically, structurally, cosmetically. She is in perfect condition, ready to go traveling tomorrow. Don't need to do anything to this boat. The owners, two couples, have taken extremely good care of her in the past few years of ownership, and she's ready for her next journey. So we're gonna take a tour through the boat today, show you all her special attributes, and go from there. One of the things I'm gonna show you a little bit later, you might notice compared to other 54s, you look kind of closely, you'll see there's a third set of port lights on the hull side. So yes, this is one of the very rare house 54s, maybe the only one out there with a set of port lights in the forward cabin. So we're gonna go take a look through this boat here. It's a beautiful Hylas 54. and show you what she's got. Stay tuned. All right, so we're gonna start back here on the transom. One of the first things you're gonna notice is that um, Rover has an Aristo Blue Auger paint job. This is a really striking color of blue. So it's got a mix of the dark blue, royal blue kind of look to it. And it really pops in the sunlight with that gold cove stripe. And of course the white boot stripe and the green bottom paint. Just a really nice color combination. All the teak on the transom and the tow rail and the rub rail, it's all been nicely oiled and sealed. It's a really nice, darker, natural teak color. And then the teak seats in the back here and the grab rails are all high gloss varnish. So it's a really nice combination. Really easy to upkeep and it just looks good. Uh, you can see here the Hylas trademark stainless. We've got two nice electronics masks and a transom here. We have a satellite TV dome. We have a satellite phone dome along with Sirius XM satellite radio, AIS antenna, SSB antenna. You can see here it's got a built-in crane for the 20 horsepower Yamaha four-stroke outboard and this high field rib dinghy here. Now this is an aluminum floor dinghy with a sea deck interior inside. It's a really high quality combo set here, especially with that outboard. It's great for cruising in the islands. You can take it down to the Bahamas. You can go cruising all day on this thing. It's got plenty of space for a lot of people and a lot of gear. And of course you have the striking Simpson Lawrence stainless steel davits there. That is really high quality. They're beefy. They just, again, add to the stainless quality of the rest of the boat. You can see down there, we've got the trademark Hyla swim ladder. Now that swim ladder is excellent because that one, when it folds down, it pops into position and it's vertical. So it doesn't bend under the boat when you climb up on it. It doesn't bend down. It just stays straight up and down. So it's great for diving gear. You have tanks on or that kind of thing and it's nice and wide. Moving forward some, you can see that the stern push bits have pushed forward the midships. And thanks to that, we have a magma barbecue grill here run on the stern push pit. We also have a built-in cradle for a life raft. And you pull this pin right here and the whole life raft can fall off into the water. So it's a really easy way to get the life raft deployed. Um, if you've done a lot of serious offshore cruising, you'll know that a lot of these life rafts are kind of heavy. So getting it off the boat, especially if it's in a space that you know you normally don't get to, you just store it in a lazarus or something, in an emergency, it could be impossible to get out with this. You pull the pin, it deploys in the water. Really easy to do. See, just the quality of the auger paint job here is just excellent throughout. It's really nicely done. Uh, you can see again the forward set of port lights here. Um, this is a very rare custom feature. She might be the only House 54 with this feature. You'll see what I mean when you go into the forward cabin. It just really brightens up the interior up there. All the way at the bow, we have a stainless steel rock and a 40 anchor. Again, just adds to the appeal of the stainless steel structure of the boat. We have a very nicely done bow pulpit here, and there's a teak seat up there as well. All the sails are recent, and they're high quality. We've got a uh, quantum uh, carbon fiber uh, with a taffeta cover mainsail for 2015. We have the Genoa here is a North Sails Genoa. I believe it's a Spectra uh, laminate, and uh, it's maybe three or four years old, I believe. And the stay sail's not that old either. Uh, all of it's really, really nice shape. All the sails are really nicely done. We 
can see we got the two-tone deck here with the beige non-skid contrasting with the white gel coat. The standing rigging was all redone last year. It's all new standing rigging. Of course, while the mast was down, everything else was checked and serviced. Everything else looks great. All the running rigging looks very nicely serviceable. Long has been upgraded. See the canvas here is in like new condition. It's all clear. It's all in great shape. There's everything about this boat just oozes quality and good maintenance and fanatical set of owners. Let's have board. All right, we'll start here on the bow. One of the big things you notice, and you'll hear me talk about it a lot, is the stainless steel on these boats. It's a super, super high quality. One way you can tell is look at the welds. You see the welds here? There's no beading. It's all very smooth, all highly done and then polished. And you know, this boat's a 2006 and just came from the Caribbean, Bermuda, from heavy salt in the ocean. There's no rust or corrosion on any of the stainless. It's a 2006 boat. You know, this is something you see from a high quality trademark manufacturer like Hylas. You look here at the stainless steel plate at the, at the bow that forms the, you know, the stem, for the four stay, you've got the dual anchor rollers, and all this is just a stainless steel that's been extremely well constructed. It's very beefy. You got a Furlex furler there, that looks to be a nice shape. Again, you've got that really nice seat up there in the bow. Great to sit up there and you know get some nice photos or experience the uh, the open air while you're underway. All the lifelines here are in good shape, and they're overbuilt. This is oversized. Got these stainless steel chocks right here for your dock lines, set of cleats. It's the anchor locker right here. Now these anchor lockers, all the deck catches have these bailey latches right here. Now these are all locking, so you can seal the compartment up. It's got a gasket to make it watertight. And you just torque these down and these will screw down tight to hold the hatch down so you can keep this area nice and dry when you're underway. You see we got a split anchor locker up forward there, so we got the primary road on the left and then on the right we've got a backup set of set of line, some more chain down here, a lot more storage. We should have a have there's a wash down hose over here. And we got a second anchor road pipe right there. Just behind that is another hatch. This one leads down to the sail locker. Now this goes up and under the anchor locker, so there's a lot of space in here. We have footsteps to get downside. Uh, there's another short power cord in here. Looks like parts of a spinnaker. So you see the sock down there, that horse collar, that white thing. That's for the ATN sleeve for the spinnaker. So you can easily deploy that. Uh, down underneath all this, you'll see a pipe right there. Uh, that's where the forward holding tank is. There's a hatch down there for it. Again, there's just a ton of storage down here. There's even lights in here. Just behind that, you see the inner stay here. This is for the cutter rig stay sail. Again, you look at the, you know, all the material here. The stay sail is in great shape. This is a great sail to use at night or in heavy breeze. We see just some extra pad eyes here. This hatch is right over the forward bed, so you have some ventilation, some light down there. Now these pad eyes would be great to store a dinghy up on deck, upside down, or lash on any other gear you would have, jack lines, that sort of thing. Two derade vents for ventilation. There's two more on the transom. So you got a couple more deck hatches here again for more ventilation of light and like the forward head in the third cabin on the port side. As you look at the mast here, and there's no corrosion to be seen on this mast. This is a 2006 rig. And all of it here is in great shape. The motor for the mainsail is in great shape. There's no flaking paint on it or anything. All that looks very nice. The mainsail looks great. UV covers in excellent shape. As I mentioned, all the standing rigging had been replaced last year, so all that's in fantastic condition. I mentioned the canvas before, all this is in 
really great shape. The electric primary winches, secondaries here for the stay sail, main sheet winches back there. Shore power connection, a single 50 amp cord. There's also a phone and TV connection if you want to go that route. And then we have propane storage, the propane bottle right there. And there's another one on the starboard side. You can see we have our runners right here for when you're using the stay sail. They go through this block here. And then again, we have these not really nice stern sheets built to the push pit. And one of the things you're gonna notice, if you look at different eras of Hyos 54s, you'll see that this seat here has a really bumped out a lot more than others. So it's pushed back this frame a good bit more. This allows you more deck space and also allows you easy access to get this hatch open. This comes all the way up just like that. And we have a ton of storage in here. There's a duplicate on the starboard side. There's also another garage on the transom. And again, these all have bailey latches. They all have gaskets so you can seal them down tight. And they have a nice big pipe there for a drain right over the side. So here's the outboard again with the crane. It's on a block of tackle, so it's really easy to lift up and stow here when you're going underway. You can leave it on the back of the dinghy as well. If you're just cruising the island, some island to island, you can leave it on the back. But if you're doing a uh, an ocean voyage, you can be out there with some surf. You know, it's good to take it off and lessen the load on the davits a little bit. See down there, we had the nice teak steps with the ladder. Again, there's your transom garage. There's the other lazarette on the starboard side. Main sheets here, hatch over the aft cabin. The cockpit here, really just beautifully set up. You can see here we have teak seats and a teak deck down there. Adds to the flavor of the cockpit and the interior. We also have a full set of cockpit cushions that goes all the way around. They're in gray, just like the bimini top here. Step back to the rear end of the cockpit. You can see the uh, rain rain charm plotter right here. We have EIS, we have radar, we have forward looking sonar, we've got autopilot, bow thruster control. It's your mainsail and your starboard electric winch controls, engine controls, and on the port side, we have the port side winch control, and then we have the auxiliary panel here. Now, this is how you turn on like your deck lights. Uh, you can control the windlass from here, the blower, bilge pumps, a lot of the um, the major systems you might need to get to from the helm, you can get to right here instead of having to run below. Uh, Storage-wise, there's a couple little cubbies up forward. I'm sitting over two cubbies right now, and just beside me here, there's a couple more little hatches. This is good for like an emergency kit, flares, handheld VHF, sunscreen, all that sort of stuff can go right in there. Moving just forward, We've got a really nice varnished teak cockpit table right here. This is drop leaves so the whole thing folds up. Leaves come open, right for alfresco dining, and we have a built-in cup holders right here. Of course, these are cut out here so you can have your coffee with a mug in the morning so your handle fits in nicely. We've got panning way doors here. We have these really nice opening doors. They have built-in vents on them as well, and then you can just pull these off and store them below when you're offshore cruising. So you don't have to deal with the sliders that pop on and off. These are nice if you're gonna be an anchor for a while. You just wanna open or close them and not have to deal with the sliders. Uh, we do have a set of uh, add-on LED lights over top, couple little bars right there. A couple of windows built into the canvas top here and here, so your helmsman can see what's going on with the mainsail. And then you can see here that the, the Dodger is at a nice height so you can easily see over it. It's got a grab bar right here that goes all the way across. So you can hang on to it and easily get yourself down below. Speaking of down below, let's go for a tour. All right, welcome inside Rover. Now, if you've been looking at Hylos 54s, there's going to be some striking differences here between a lot of the other boats you've seen. One of the big things you'll pick up right away is that the saloon tv is actually built into the bulkhead in this box here so instead of standing proud it's actually flush and you have a little bit of storage space underneath for remotes or anything else you might have 
We've got a raised panel cabinetry with that nice dark mahogany inlay. And that's in all the doors and all the cabinets. White ultra leather cushions. It's a walnut top table here. There's a filler piece that goes in, so this opens up, makes it to a larger table. And underneath, you have a little bit more storage space. It's good for books or anything else, or games, that kind of thing you want to have. And this moving chair here or ottoman. It's a nice shipyard add-on here. So you have another cabinet here with another walnut countertop. Now normally on a house 54, you'd see this cushion come all the way out here to the edge. This would not be here. So this is just another nice little add-on. You know, if you're sitting here and you have a book or you know, a cup of coffee or something, you can drop it there. And then we have more storage beneath. There we go, cleaning supplies. This is a traditional teak and holly cabin sole. Now the teak here is a little bit darker than you've seen in some other Ohio's 54s. I like this look. It's a really nice, nice to pick up, you know, brightens up the interior. We have this great looking mosaic here built in. That was custom done at the shipyard. This chair here that pops in and out. Of course, we have the nav station. We have a chart plotter, VHF, SSB, stereo. Traditional Hylus electrical panel here. Hylus has won so many awards for their electrical systems. It's it's crazy. Um, their their electrical setups have just you know been top notch compared to any manufacturer out there. And you'll find out who's at the top of their game. I mean, you just need to look back here and just see how all well this was done. This is just painstaking effort to make all this perfect. And this was done in 2006. I mean, you, you look at what, you know, uh, people these days, a lot of manufacturers are super proud of what they've done now. Just the past couple of years, Hylus led the game in 2006 and before with how they did their boats. Generator control panel, oh, remote control, wireless for the autopilot. Uh, Wi-Fi printer, great to have if you're offshore and need to print something out. Uh, sat phone, VHF. Now, underneath here, we have all your master disconnects. These are for your, uh, your your refrigeration, your batteries, your winches, anything that's like really high power, DC power, these are where your master breakers are gonna be, right under the nav station. EPIRB, carbon monoxide detector. A starboard side here, but traditional, you know, starboard side single. Now this pulls out right here. This whole cushion comes out with this bed. So you can form this into a larger bed. So it's nice to lay here when you're at sea. You have a bookshelf right here with the divider so you can hold the books up at sea. And again, we have an extension here of this walnut countertop, which is really nice. Going forward, you can see the keel step mast right here. And again, there's, there's more storage everywhere. See, there's another set of storage right there. Be great to hold you know, DVDs or Blu-ray discs. Coming to the port side cabin here. Now this is the port side guest cabin. Uh, this lower piece is on a slider. This whole thing comes out and there's another cushion that will go in here. So this can put one large bed in here so you can sleep two people. Uh, we have more of this cabinetry here. Nice large hanging locker. If you look around, you can see there's a spot here of hat eyes to put lead cloths in. Or this hanging bar here. This is a great foul weather gear. You get your cockpit cushions right here at the bottom. There's the drop leaf for that saloon table. It's in its nice little holder. And again, there's more storage all over the place. A lot of people will use this cabin uh, to store tools to use as a workbench and that kind of thing. So there's a lot of storage above and below. And there's a door here. This whole door slides closed to lock out the, this cabin. Moving forward, you can see, you know, just look at the detail of this door here with this, the raised panel type door with that deep mahogany inlay. It's really well done. Uh, this is a, a full beam V-berth. You could have done a V-berth. You could have done an island berth up here. I like the V-berth because you get so much more bed space up here. They have a couple steps there that flip down, flip up, I'm sorry. So you can get up in the bed. Uh, those are your breakers there for uh, your windlass and uh, your bow thruster. 
I mentioned those forward port lights. Look how much brighter it is in here with those forward port lights in this boat. Um, most, if, if not all of them besides this boat, do not have this port light. So this is just a really, really well done add-on to the boat. Uh, a large deck hatch. We have ocean air screens and blinds built in. A couple of reading lamps. There I am. Hello, world. We have another TV up here. This one, again, is mounted in a box, so it's flush to the bulkhead. It looks really nice. We have more lockers on port, more lockers on starboard. And then we have uh, the starboard head. There's a private entrance here from the forward cabin. There's also an entrance right there. We have a set of mirrors here, and these all flip up. So you have plenty of storage behind. Vacuum flush head. Uh, it had its own holding tank. It also has um, uh, automatic overboard discharge. So you can set the auto when the tank uh, hits a certain level, it'll automatically pump it out. Great for use if you're offshore. This is a really nice add on here. Uh, this custom fiberglass flooring um, that's actually uh, modeled after the, the countertops in here as well. It's the Corian countertops. It closely mirrors it. And uh, oh, we also had the uh, overboard discharge pump for the shower in here. So it's, and we had this really nice high lip on it too. So this area is really well thought out and customized when the boat was ordered. We have this uh, flip down seat here. We have more storage on the outboard right here. Tons and tons of storage. This glass door right here. It comes close to seal off the shower area. Going back into the saloon here, we'll make our way aft. On the inboard side, center line, you'll see we have this sink here. Now this is um, this is really nice because it's a large single basin. I really don't like when they divide the sinks up. Cause you lose a lot of square footage in the sink. This is a really nice single basin sink. You have plenty of room for dish drying racks over here. We've got a hand pump for fresh water. We've got a fresh water drinking tap with a filter. We even have a pull out nozzle here for the pressure fresh water. So this really big sink, I really like that having, you know, this large amount of area. And we have more storage over here all around. There's some cleaning supplies. And we've got this little like, hideaway, you know, little nook right here. Great for spices, nice spice cabinet. Great pa towel holder right there. On the other side, you can see we've got an ice maker. You gotta have an ice maker at the Bahamas. It's a requirement right there. If you don't think it is, get one. Trust me, you're gonna love it. Um, trash can right there. Just a nice, easy, pop that up, toss it in there, and then you can pull it out. Refrigeration, top and front loading. Uh, Frigio boat, digital controls right back there in the bulkhead. Force 10, three burner stove and oven. We gonna pull up this countertop right here. It comes closed so you can increase the countertop space. Convection microwave oven. And there's more and more storage all around. There's a pantry right here. Great headroom all the way through here. So we're coming into the master cabin here. This is back aft. We have a center line queen size berth. Now, like you may have seen in the forward cabin, both these mattresses are real spring mattresses. They're super high quality. These would be great to sleep on for long-term uh, liveaboard. We've got a ton of storage in here. In the back, we've got two bookshelves. There's a vanity and drawers on this side here. Hanging locker. More storage in here. These four boards come up. There's a ton of storage underneath. The starboard side, you can see there's more storage cubbies, more storage under here, hanging locker. There's a TV here on the bulkhead that can swing out. There's a full-size bureau right here. And these are all steer line. They all have built-in lights, shelves, hanging bars. It's really not well done. Aft head here. Again, we had this nice custom four pan set up. Storage behind the mirrors, vacuum flush head. We come into here, into the shower compartment. It's got a built-in washer dryer unit. And then if we turn around, 
close this door, open this door. This is a mechanical access right here. So you can see we have the water heater, access to plumbing. There's a built-in light in here. The back side, the generator. You see a little bit here going on with the steering system. Uh, this stainless steel rod right here coming down to this linkage. This is the Lumor Mamba system. So there's no uh, cables uh, in the system. It's all using linkages and torque tubes. So um, it's a very nice system that's not going to stretch over time. The steering you had today, the steering you're gonna have 10 years from now, it's gonna be the same. Uh, this other piece here, that's the autopilot motor that connects directly to it. See the back side of the engine right there, turbocharger, air filter, and the drive shaft that's under there. And there's a door on the other side that gets this as well. So we're gonna go there next. All right, so here we are on the uh, starboard side from that door we were just in, which is over there. We can see here, we've got the Fisher Panda Gen Set. She's got about 2,000 hours on her. Runs like a top, no problems. You can see the engine mounts right there, the water filter, the exhaust muffler. Uh, the back side of the engine, there's a transmission down there. You can see the oil cooler, turbo, exhaust elbow, all of that looks to be in very nice condition. You see some of the fuel manifold there on the front right, fuel filters on the door all the way up front. You see the engine mount there. We're gonna move around a little bit. And all these doors here come off as well. So not flopping around when you're doing the engine service, they just pull straight up and off these pins. They have a great amount of insulation. They all seal tight. More doors here. Of course, you've got the large front door access. Easy access to your fuel filters right there. You've got this handle so you can rotate between which filter you want to use or both of them if you decide. And this little chart right here tells you all these valves, where they go and what they do, because we've got four fuel tanks on this boat. We have an engine and a generator, and of course all the returns. So you gotta figure out which valve goes where and how it operates. There's the beastie. There's your house alternator right there. There's your engine battery alternator. It's your water tank valves right there. See that we've got four water tanks, things going different places. Now the engine looks fantastic. The engine has 5,600 hours on it. Now some people out there say that's a lot. Um, I think they're kind of foolish because these are 10,000 hour engines minimum. Um, with good maintenance, these engines will run for beyond the life of the boat. Uh, it's a diesel tractor engine. It's in a very nice environment, being kept out of the dust and the soot just down here in the engine room, clicking away. Uh, with fastidious maintenance like these owners have done and the passengers for them, uh, the engine's guaranteed to last to light the boat. She actually had a compression test done uh, just last week and uh, she passed with 100%. So there's no services needed for this engine. She's gonna outlast the life of this boat and the life of the next owner of this boat. It's just uh, the fantastic way these EMRs are built and maintained well. Um, so if uh, you want your engine to last, do the maintenance. I know it costs money, but you gotta do it like these guys have done. Uh, we've got a auxiliary panel right here, just like a mechanics start stop switch. And then you have a water pump switch. What's that water pump switch for you ask? Well, that's for the second fresh water pump. It's an entirely separate circuit from the main panel. So let me uh, ask you this. If you had a fire in that panel, well, how would you get water out of the fresh water tank? Well, that's how, with the secondary fresh, fresh water pump that's on a separate circuit. That's why it's there. So. Really smart people at Hylus when they designed and built these boats. They thought of a lot of things that someone might have to go through offshore, but they might need to get some of the vital supplies out of the boat, one of them being water. Without water, we can't survive very long. So here we go. This is the Hylus 54 Rover. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in for the Hylus 54 Rover. I know we haven't done very many videos lately. I apologize for that. It's been quite busy. We've been selling a lot of boats. A lot of boats have been selling off market. Uh, they have not been listed online. Um, we've just been listing them and we've been selling them. So if you're looking for one of these boats, you might not even see a pop-up before it's gone. So let us know you're looking. We'll put you on the list and make sure you get the next one. My name is Eric Holland. I'm with David Walters Yachts. My email is eric, E-R-I-K, at davidwaltersyachts.com. And my cell phone is 410-279-3027.